Good morning, everybody. Hopefully you're having a good good Thursday. Holy cow. First day of October. Time's flying by. Anyways, I'm trying to get everything all set up here. A little behind the power curve, but not too bad. Hopefully you are not behind the power curve and you're doing absolutely fine. Welcome to Break the, DS, uh, Break the Cycle with DSD. I'm your host, Dwayne. I'm not a therapist. I'm an individual much like yourself who's gone through a tough experience, developed some tips and techniques that helped me that I share with you to help you get out of this, to get your life back, to minimize the impact, to see the crazy or see some light through the tunnel, break, break out of the crazy and just get your life back. Remember that only a licensed therapist can uh, diagnose somebody with a personality disorder. So just be careful going around and calling your ex certain, uh, you know, calling them an MPD or BPD or, or whatever it is. It hurts your credibility when you do that. So focus on the patterns of behavior. That's how you win this thing. Focus on what they're actually doing. Don't just call them, you know, call them out on things. If you have a diagnosis, that's a different story, but you get a lot more, you have a lot more success focusing on what they're actually doing, not why they're doing it or why we think they're doing it. If you like what's going on here and you want to support the channel, you can do that by becoming a channel member over at uh, uh, YouTube. There's a few new ones today that'll be listed. So thank you so much for doing that. I appreciate it. If you want to get text notified, and it did go out today, yesterday the problem was is that I set it to go off at 5.55 p.m. instead of a.m. So that's why it didn't go out. Uh, but if you want to uh, get that, just text DSD Live to 844-598-0012, 844-598-0012. The phone lines are open. You can dial in today's show at 1424-373-5483 or 1424-DSD Live. Also, if uh, you are outside the country and you don't want to pay the crazy international rates you can use the web interface which is free uh, a little bit more of a delay but it works seems to have worked pretty good so you can uh, that's in the link on for that is in the description and if you're new to this channel and you haven't done so yet please uh, hit the subscribe button ring the notification bell because all those numbers help YouTube actually cares about that and hopefully everybody is doing all right. I'm still trying to, th this whole thing with this being on the, on the wrong side. See, I forgot to hit record today, but that's all right. I can pull it off of the video. See, I'm just, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm f uh, flustered sometimes and just don't, uh, don't, don't have everything all lined up. So let me, let me get some stuff moved around today and that way I can see everything. Oh, actually, I can't do that because that will mess something else up. All right, guys. So let's see. We got a few people here already. Let me see what's going on. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I, ha I had an idea for a topic today. I just have to remember the... Uh, remember what exactly it is I was going to say. Uh, let me just double check a couple of things. All right. So... Interesting week, right? I mean, things have been definitely a little, little, uh, a little weird this week. Still trying to figure that one out. But what I wanted to hit, and I kind of talked about this the other day, but I kind of actually, you know, what I'll do is I'll say this: I got an email from um, from a person who is struggling, being in their mind, they're being targeted by a narcissistic person and a, an active smear campaign is going going on and I said this the other day but I think I really needed to to, to kind of dwell on this for a moment and one of the things that you, everybody has to absolutely realize is you're not trying to convince yourself right I mean now if you're saying stuff and everyone's nodding their head and going, oh my God, yeah, you're right. You're such the victim. You, you know, you, you, uh, uh, that's so wrong what's happening to you and, and you have no part in it. And, you know, you are just, 
You know, it's just so sad that that's what's happened to you. And then fine, you know, <clears throat> then you're, you're potentially, you know, winning the day. Oddly enough, though, most of the time, it seems like we get the exact opposite. We try to explain to people what's going on. We try to get our side of the story out there, and people look at us like, wait, wait what? You know, you're, you're saying that, but that doesn't make any sense. The main part on this is you have to realize that you are not trying to convince yourself of what's going on. The argument that would work on you wouldn't necessarily work on the next person. And typically, not always, but typically the narcissistic person is really adept, if that's the right word, really skilled, I'll say that, really skilled at being able to spin a story, communicate it in such a way that everybody believes it, and you are stuck, you, you're stuck, you're, you are set there or stuck there trying to point out the, the fallacies of their argument. But people are looking at you like, man, you're unhinged. Something's not right. If you find yourself in that situation, you have to take a moment and say, huh, this isn't working. Every time I seem to open my mouth, I'm undermining my undermine. <laughs> yeah undermine my own argument. I, I say that because I screwed up the title the other day because I was tired. Mental note, don't make thumbnails when, you're, when you should be in, asleep. But you undo your own progress. It's critically important that you recognize that and slow yourself down. Because a narcissistic person, they thrive whenever they can get you unhinged. They can get you thinking sporadically. Well, not even sporadic is not the right word. Whenever you're basically reacting and you're in defensive mode and you're back on your heels and you're just trying to do something quickly to accomplish, not accomplish a goal, but, but to, to defend yourself. It's like the more that they can throw on, the more that you can start making mistakes, the more they can leverage off of it. So this particular person was uh, taking the bait. And the advice I, I gave him in email was just, look, you, you should you know, stop what you're doing, stop engaging, and really think about how you're you know, every time you try something, it doesn't work. Now, there's a simple way in my mind, not that it's easy, but there's a way to, to address that to try to, to, turn, to turn the tide. And that is, is you have to start systematically, tear, not, tear, not tearing down is not the right word, but systematically undoing the arguments the person is doing. I'll, I'll use an example in my own life where when my relationship was completely flaming out, you know, our house was a disaster and uh, the ex would, would often say, well, you left out this bowl, you know, so you're responsible for it too. And, and at that particular moment, she's absolutely right. I had left out that bowl or I hadn't done this or I hadn't done that. So I got irritated and I finally said, okay, you know what? Every time something comes up, I'm going to systematically undo it. You know, you, know, you, know, you don't, you know, you leave stuff out too, right? So I started when I would come home from work, the first thing I would do is I would walk in the house and I would start cleaning. It's like, okay, the kitchen is a disaster. I do the dishes, the va floor needed to be vacuumed. I start vacuuming and I'd spend pretty much the first couple hours of when I got home, undoing that. And every time there was that argument that, well, you do this too, or, you know, well, this is why is because of, because of this thing that you did, then I would undo that. Now, as you guys know, 
that doesn't go well with a with a toxic person and it all it did was accelerate the destruction of the marriage but i got i got tired of my argument or, or my feelings or my story or whatever being just undone because of you know laundry list of examples of things so for instance if someone is saying you know all you know let's see uh let, let, we'll use okay we'll use the the mother-in-law daughter, daughter-in-law story and we'll say let's say mother-in-law suspects that the daughter-in-law is being a narcissistic person their son has been completely turned and they want to talk to the mother-in-law wants to be able to talk to their son and the story that come or what comes out is yeah you can do that but it but we're a couple and you have to do it together then you do it together right i mean you 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 systematically start to undo this because if you say no i want to talk i want it done my way a person can easily spin that to say well we tried we try, but they refuse. They try to control the game. And it's just really funny because that's exactly what the other person is doing. But, but if you get into a situation to where they're, they're, constantly, they're constantly able to take your reactions and your demands and spin it against you, you have to look at something different. This goes with, with everything we've been talking about this basically this last week. If you keep trying to do the same thing and you're not getting any results, you have to ask yourself what in the world you're trying to accomplish. So, I mean, you really only have one of two choices. Well, you have three choices. You can continue to do things the exact same way that you've been trying to do it and expecting that somehow now, all all of a sudden, somehow people are going to see through everything and start to side with you. And, and, And you're, you're thinking that while at the same time looking at everything that's happened in the past, that has not, nothing you've done to that point has worked out where people are starting to, to believe your story or believe it in, in the numbers that your arguments are justified. Now, it's real super easy to turn around and go, oh, well, but I have this small percentage of people that believe me. We all do. We all have a small percentage of people that are going to be on uh, you know, team, team Dwayne, so to speak. But if the 90% of the people aren't, then there's a problem with your with your argument. There's a problem with your story. You have to start systematically being able to to derail that. Guys, this works with your kids. This works with in-laws. This works with you know, people at work. You have to figure out what the hell they're trying to get you to do. That that's the key, right? They're trying to get you to take the bait and they're trying to get you to respond in a way that continues to validate their version of the story. And every time we do that, we keep losing ground. We keep going down, 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 down. Some point, at some point we can get to the point, at some point we can get to the point. <laughs> There's a time when we will get so far down that it's almost nearly impossible to crawl up. I, I, however, I do think there always is a possibility that you can you can undo some of this, but it just makes it harder and harder the farther you go down and the farther are the more mistakes that you make. So does, let me ask for the people who are watching, does that make sense? Do you, does, do you, is there an, uh, an aha moment in there? And, I, and while I'm waiting for that, I'm just going to say that there were so many times when I started this that I just assumed everybody would understand the complexity of my story. And early on, I, even with people who seem to be on my camp, who would say, man, you, I feel, you know, your side, I believe more than the other side. There were times where I would get caught up in a trap where I would say something and they would be like, wait, wait a minute, what? And you have to really be careful on how you interact in these situations and with these people. All right, so I'm seeing a bunch of yeses. So I appreciate that. I see Cynthia says yes. Jack says yes. All right, so there's some, com- there's some conversations going on in there. 
So I see Shane. Let's see. Shane says, uh, Dwayne, she manipulated you into go, uh, doing the majority of the cleaning. My ex did the same thing. They make you feel like you do nothing in an attempt for you to do more. It's ultimately never good. Yeah, but just to be clear, I mean, just full disclosure, I wasn't doing a whole hell of a lot. I mean, you know, initially that argument was absolutely true. You know, I was going to work. She was a stay-at-home person. And the, the frustrating part was it was like I would have to do not so much during the day, but it was like, you know, the weekends would roll around and it would be like, okay, now we're going to do all the stuff that I didn't do during the week. And it's like, are you kidding me? You know, I need a freaking break. I don't need to just dr dive into another catastrophe. But I don't want anyone to think out there that I'm saying, hey, I was, uh, you know, I was Mr. Susie Homemaker, you know, Mr. Clean or whatever. You know, I was, uh, uh, I wasn't helpful. I, I got to the point, I think like a lot of us do, where I shut off. I, I just, just was going through the motions and just surviving. So it's like I would like get tunnel vision, not, uh, not try to look to the peripheral and uh, try to ignore it. But it was really stressful. I mean, I remember days where I'd come home and I would just take a deep breath before I would walk through the garage. Keep in mind, I couldn't park in the garage. <laughs> I, don't, I wonder how many people have had this experience. I'm just curious. So I, uh, when we had our house, we have a two-car garage, you know, the normal, normal house thing. And every once in a while, we would clean up the house, or clean up the garage, I'm sorry, and we'd be able to park the vehicles in the garage. And I'd be all happy. It's like, oh, my God, the vehicles are in the garage where they belong. Then I would go to work. For a couple of days and I would come home one day within the first week within the first week this would always happen garage door you know it'd go up and there's crap piled where I would park my vehicle and I'm like damn it you know maybe the first time I might move it and then within a week within another week or two of that it would be just all the vehicles or the two vehicles were outside again because there was no room in the garage Lather, rinse, and repeat. That cycle went on and on and on. I'll tell you right now, my truck and my car are in the garage. And my Bronco, which I can't drive, is outside. But, you know, I don't have a three-car garage. You know, and it's weird, right? Because that's one of those things that's almost like a, used to be a triggering thing, thing. And it is still really important to me, right? I mean, it's like, you know, every once in a while, if something I'm moving stuff around and I have to park something outside, that's fine. But at least I did it. And then I can move it around and it's not somebody, you know, not somebody else adding to the disaster, if you know what I mean. So let me look and see what else is going on here. Who else out there has some nice coffee? I should have had, I should be on my second cup today. I don't know about you guys, but I have not been sleeping well lately. I don't know. I'm kind of hoping that it starts to cool down. I like it when it's really cool, cold, cool. Um, and you know, lately it's been not cool around here. It's been, been, uh, eking up in the temperatures, which makes things really tough. All right. Let's see here. What else we got going on? Uh, Tiffany says DSD, a small combo with another mom about the price of shoes. Apparently I just didn't want to buy shoes. See, I'm not sure I completely reading that right, Tiffany, but but I think what you're saying is, is you're having an art. You, see, I think if I'm hearing this correctly, that's a good example of it, right? You know, if, if we're, and I've fallen into, if, if this is what you're talking about, I've fallen into this trap before where I would say something and I would, and, and there's all this extra stuff. That's, that's part of the problem with it is we have all this extra information. So our comments in our own minds make sense because in the context, there's all the extra background information. For instance, I'll go back to that other story I was alluding to earlier, and it was the Christmas one. That first year where the ex decided unilaterally, you know, uh, we're, I have the kids this year, and we're leaving the state, and I'll let you know where they are. You know, I'll let you talk to them on the phone on Christmas. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute. Court order says I get to see them. So in my mind, it all made sense. So when I was talking to that other person and I was talking about this and it's like, well, why, why wouldn't you let them go? Everyone, you know, I mean, it was like in, in their mind, because a lot of people do that, right? A lot of people for the holidays is like, okay, you get the ho entire holiday this year 
It is you. I am out of it. You can go to the Bahamas. You can do whatever the heck you want. And I'm out of it. Maybe I'll talk to him on the phone, right? Some people do that. And that was what, you know, so when I was making my argument saying, hey, this is messed up. I'm not, you know, this is wrong. And the person's like, well, wh why is it wrong? And I was like, oh, crap. You know, they're not, they, they obviously don't understand all the, the dynamics of it. And I had to be a little careful what I said because there was two parts, the reason why I was saying no. One was the kids were freaked out and didn't want to go. And uh, we're like, oh, crap, you know, um, we see mom and dad every year for Christmas. That's what it was supposed to be. Now that's not going to happen. And the other part of it was that, you know, she made everything, the ex made everything so damn difficult. And I didn't pay attention to the, to, I thought the, the uh, holiday was just the normal two weeks. For whatever reason, our school does this thing where it's like the, the holiday starts on like the, the it's, it goes from like Thursday, I don't know of what it, what it is, but basically it's two weeks plus the previous Thursday. So what ends up happening in my situation is, is that since mom used to get the kids for Monday and Tuesday, now we're on this week on week, week off schedule, which I'll go into more detail on that in a moment. And so basically for that period of time, she's got the kids anyways, Wednesday rolls around. Well, Thursday's the holiday. So technically whoever has them for the year gets the kids on that holiday. So she keeps them for the whole week. So it turns out to be like a 28 day block of time. So anyways, it's just one of those things where when I was trying to make that argument, it made no sense. The person didn't get it. And I was effectively just under, you know, just, just hurting my own position, trying to explain it. And, uh, it wasn't working. All right, let me look and see what else is going on in the comments. It looks like I have a caller, so I'll grab that in a moment. Oh, wow, I missed. Oh, first things first, I'll grab this. Uh, T Solo says, uh, Super Chat says, Dwayne, I cannot thank you enough. These videos and talks have become a friend to me and gave me great advice. I have defeated the narcissist. Awesome, man. That is outstanding. And I'm glad I could uh, be of service and, and help you out with that. So thank you so much for the support. I appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Oh, I see Flying Free says making a chai latte now. <laughs> no sleep here either. Yeah, it gets it gets tiring whenever you whenever you're not getting good rest. All right. So I do have a caller. So I am going to hopefully not screw this up. So let me hit the button. Hello and welcome to the show. Good morning, Dwayne. It's Tiffany. Hey, how you doing? So can you explain to me what you were trying to say? So the when when we first started with visitations, I was picking up my children at uh, the ex's house. Um, he has a duplex. The tenant was also the children's babysitter and my best friend. Okay. So I said to her on drop-off, I was like, yeah, I just bought the kids' shoes. I'm like, it's amazing how much money that they want for shoes. And, you know, it's not it's not like the same grade of fabric from yesteryear. Like, shoes from yesteryear held up so much better. Yeah. I'm like, clothes, too. Like, it's amazing. You know, I don't understand this, this commerce that we have where we just keep buying cheap stuff. And I'm, I'm making all these comments. And I leave for the evening. And I get this text and my ex was telling me, you know, oh, well, you shelled out for $100 for shoes. You know, I shell out more than that. And how dare you complain about spending $100? I'm like, dude, I was complaining about the quality of things nowadays in general. And it just became this big, big ordeal where, you know, he spent thousands of dollars to clothe them and. I'm like, yeah, okay. I mean, I, at that point, I mean, I just let it go. Like, all right, yeah, sure, if that's what you think. Yeah, it gets to the but point where it's just... I had just, to have that side conversation yeah. with the other person, the babysitter, and I'm like, did did my message sound like that? I was like, I, I thought I was just, you know, showing some type of notice in, in the things that we buy. Right. 
What'd they say? She, she didn't have anything like, I mean, we, we did this for on and off four years. Every time school would run around, you know, buying new stuff for them. It's like, yeah, you're right. There was a decline in quality of, of uh, product. She didn't see anything that I said as wrong. Well, what did she say to the to your ex, though? I mean, why did the conversation even come up? Did you ever get any information on that? The, conver- the conversation came up because he he was standing outside. Oh, so he, he heard he heard her you talking. I was talking to her. Oh, about. okay. Yeah, it's it, it's a duplex. The doors are like right next to each other. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. So he took. Okay, and this so was I was the beginning. So. Yeah, and, and well, I mean, in the reality of it, what it, what it ends up meaning is, is like, okay, mental note, I have to be careful what I say because, you know, I mean, that's where, I mean, I finally got to the point where it's like, I didn't even want to engage. It's like for drop-offs and pickup or p- pickups or whatever, just get the kids and get the heck out of there and minimize conversation. So, and if you're in a situation where they're in within earshot, I can definitely see that being a problem. But that's frustrating, right? Because then, then you got to be hyper vigilant every time you're in that situation, which is kind of stressful in, in and of itself. I'm just so thankful that I have court ordered recorded video visitations right now because it shows a lot more on his side than it does on mine. Uh, I have to bring up another point to my attorney this morning because last night's conversation consisted of, I hate your voice. And I had, in, in general, I'd ask, you know, how's school going, bud? And he said that because I asked him how school was going, it made him feel like crap. His words. And I'm like, okay. And then he ran off screen. I was like, well, what do I do holding this bag of poop yeah. of a comment? Like, I don't, I don't know what to do with this. And this keeps me up every Wednesday night. You know, just thinking about, oh, this is not right. Yeah, I mean, so you said you you got, it's court ordered video record, I mean, and it's recorded, so you have a recording of all that too? Yes, he's supposed to provide, he got control of the recording, which he hasn't been, oh, been sending to my attorney, there's a motion to compel, there's, it's it's a whole circus show. Is it, are you using Zoom? Yeah. Um, yes, I am. I, they do not give, they have not given me permission to record on my end, but there's, um, Mm. if anybody's out there and having to do the same thing, um, the, and you happen to have windows, the windows G button will activate recording for Xbox gaming, but, um, it works just the same and I've been able to collect my own evidence. No, I'm glad you have that because I, I, I mean, I'm, as you said that, I'm just thinking in my mind, I'm like, okay, I see how this is going to play out. Well, your honor, uh, it didn't work right. It, uh, the, the files got lost or corrupted. I tried to record it all the time. And, you know, I mean, so I'm glad you found the first a- one they did not record. And I'm like, I, I managed to record it with my phone and it just, it's not good quality, obviously. But, right. you know, it was a five minute conversation that kids were everywhere and it's like there's no structure. Right. And I mean, even now I've got him on not providing the children during the video visitation. Um, you can hear him and see him leering in the background. Every time he comes in picture, the kids go, I don't want to talk to you. And then they leave. I mean, it's it's great, but it's same time seeing it hearing it watching it happen live is gut-wrenching oh absolutely yeah incredibly stressful and you feel completely hopeless or helpless not hopeless well maybe a little bit of both but i mean the reality is is you're documenting all this stuff you've got an upcoming date you know i mean it it, all this stuff keeps adding up to paint the picture right it kind of goes in with what we were just talking about earlier at the beginning of this show where you, you, you know, you have to paint the picture that other people understand it. I mean, we get it. We're living it. I mean, hell, even I have more of an understanding where you can give me just pieces of it and I can piece it together because I, because we have a very similar shared experience. 
whereas other people don't have that. So we have to be a lot more careful on how we craft that message and how we, we sh you know, put the information out there in little chunks so that other people can see what we're seeing. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And, um, I mean, with this motion to compel, I'm actually going to be going into court earlier than our next scheduled status hearing date because, obviously, we can't move forward without the discovery information. Oh, the absolutely. That we requested. Yeah, and then, so it's and, yeah, and then my, that's, my attorney's uh, attacking for for everything that you know yeah. that hasn't been done. He was supposed to agree to a supervisor. He hasn't agreed to one. It's been over a year. Like we should be closer to a resolution. Yeah, the sad reality is, is they they typically don't want a resolution, right? So they want to drag it on, and every time they do something like this, it adds extra time, which is frustrating for you because you just want it over. You want some stability and you want this to be, you know, the, this crap show to be to the point where it's, it's at least semi manageable, but it's, yeah, mine would do the same thing. It's like, you know, just not answer stuff and just push the dates back, you know, status hearing would come up and it's like, oh, we're not ready. Let's, let's push it back. Oh, we're not ready. Let's push it back. And here I, you know, and here you are just drowning in, in the current dynamic just like, come on, can't this get, can't we just get over with this? The thing is, is it, it, it is going to get over. It's just, it's like when you're in the midst of it, it just feels like it's never going to end. I'm fortunate enough that my attorney has already, you know, without me using the word, has already used the word alienation. And, good. you know, moving forward, we're, we're pushing for more physical time. Right. You know, whether it's supervised or not, we're pushing for more time because obviously they need to spend less time at their father's house in order to be themselves. Right. Or at least to have a good relationship with you. I mean, when, see, that's that's what's so frustrating is like if anybody else is, who's dealing with our, a, a normal divorce. Right. I mean, I, I know it feels like ours are what are normal. But what everyone's expectation is, is that the two people can actually, for the best interest of the kids, can get along and co-parent. So they don't, you know, it's like you, you throw one of our situations into it and most people just don't get it. And they're like, well, no one, no one's going to do that. Of, of course, you know, in your situation, you know, dad's going to be like, hey, you know, go, go, you know, everyone thinks this. They think this. It's like, OK, it's time for your visitation. All right. All right, guys, grab your iPad, go into your room. You got, you know, um, you get to talk to your mom for 30 minutes. You know, you've got to get ready for bed after that. But, but, and they put you in the room, they shut the freaking door and they go do something else while you're having the conversation. But that's not what happens. Like you just said, it's like they're, they're throwing little shiny objects at the kids. They're, you know, sticking their nose in it to where they're there. You don't feel comfortable having a conversation because you know that this other person is just in the background trying to wreak havoc. But but it's like, but people don't get that. They don't expect people to do it. And then we get, or you get stuck in the situation to where you're trying to prove to people like, hey, look, this is what's going on. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it was awful. I oh, dear God. <laughs> it's always it's something. It's okay that your mom doesn't love you. I love you. Yeah. I had a similar, not not quite like that, but I had one where I was trying to get the ex to, to clean the rooms of the kids. I mean, it's like, it was a disaster. The kids were young. I mean, they were like maybe under six, eh, six or seven. And uh, I'm like, look, we got to get rid of some of this stuff. This is just too much crap. You can't even see the floor. And, and the, what I got thrown back in my face was, you know, I lost everything when I was a kid, you, you know, and, and this is tr whatever triggering to her. And I'm just like, it was like, you, you, you can't win the argument. It's like, you try to use logic with, with them and, or whatever, and they will just completely, you know, cut your legs out from underneath you. That's, that's, that one's pretty rich though. Oh, my, you know, grandma's not going to live forever. So we don't need to clean our room. We need to get going. Wow. And at the time you probably were like, what? But you're like, okay, fine. You know, cause that's what I would do. I'd be like, oh, all right. Okay, fine. All right. Let's go do the other thing. Oh, I wasn't invited. You <laughs> and you weren't invited. You would do that at, at, for dinner. He, he would do that for dinners too. He would go, oh, we're going to go to, you know, I mean, he can really bring them to McDonald's because yeah. there's better places in our area. But 
but he'd be like, oh, let's go to McDonald's. And then he would get all the kids up and take them. And I'm like, I come downstairs. I'm like, where the hell is everybody? Like, wh- why is it dead silent in my house? Oh, they were actually like, gone. Kids? Oh, wow. Yeah, they, they literally just got up and left. And I'm like, wow, okay. Well, I'll, I guess I'll continue washing the dishes and yeah. I'll figure out what I'm going to eat tonight. Well, I'm too upset to eat, so I'm not going to eat. Well, hey, thanks for sharing with that this morning. I hope, uh, I hope, I hope you have a better day today, though. And thanks for calling with Tiffany. You're welcome. All right. You know what, guys? Here, here's one of the realities of this that I think we all need to, to, uh, to understand and accept. Systematically, our boundaries are tested. They're eroded. That's, that's basically by design, right? That's, what, that's exactly what they're trying to do. They test these things out. They see what they can get away with. And over time, you get so worn down. I mean, think about this. Th- take this scenario, what she was just talking about. All right, hell, I can even use some examples of, um, well, I'll just use, since that was one that just came out. I know dang and well, that didn't start out that way. It started out, <clears throat> it started out with the love bombing. It started out with everything being perfect. And then just systematically, slowly over time, these little, you know, these little hits in the armor. It's not like a full attack. It's not like, you know, they came, you know, the bombs start falling and and the the gates are blown open. It's more like somebody with a little bit of little bitty pickaxe just going tink, 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 tink. And in the beginning, you don't even really notice it. Maybe you hear it. Maybe you hear the little noise and you're like, well, you know, okay, whatever. So there's a little, there's a little, you know, divot in this rock in the foundation of the, of the wall, you know, for your boundary. And then by the time you get to the end of it, it's like there's one little sliver of, of stone left and everything, you know, it's a big gaping hole, you know, animals and critters and everything are running through. And it's like you find yourself going, how in the hell did I even get to this point? How did I become this person? How did I get to this, this crazy situation? I had a, an, an email from a, from a gentleman the other day, and that's what they were saying. They're like, you know, I just want to get back to who I was. You know, I'm such a shell of who, of the person I used to be. I just want to get back to who I used to be. And, you know, they systematically, well, DC says death by a thousand small cuts. Absolutely. It's one of those things where it's just like, it slowly happens over time. And you just, well, and let me, let me pause for a moment on this. You know, the reality is, you, when you get caught up in this, you don't see it. And then later when you do see it, you beat yourself up because you think, why couldn't, why didn't I see it? Why didn't I, I put my foot down before? Well, it's because we didn't see it clearly. And when it was going on, you still wanted to save the relationship. You're trying to keep a level of peace in your house, in your environment. So you make compromises. We all do it. And every, from what I've seen, everybody at the end of it looks at it and they are so hard on themselves because they're like, how in the world did I fall for this? It's because you were tricked. You were, you were systematically, slowly submerged to where you were comfortable with it. As I'm looking at thinking the visual as the water's creeping up your legs and you know, whatever your thighs and stomach and whatever. And then you get to the point where it's like, oh, crap, this is, this is a problem. Maria says, DSD, so true, lots of compromise. Oh, there you go. Mr. Skull says, low-grade acid on your skin, always just slightly uncomfortable. Yeah, this is the, other, the normal one. Mr. Man says, the slow boiling f- frog method is real. It absolutely is real. T. Solo says you compromise to keep the peace, but in the end you make it worse and you find out years later. See, you, yes, you are absolutely correct, but here's the key on that is once we, I, I hope, this is my hope for every one of you listening right now. 
is that from your experience, you're able to see this and you realize, and you know that you're like, oh my God, I made all these compromises that just made it worse and worse and worse and worse until it finally just degraded. My hope is, is that every one of you now can have really good boundaries that you don't make that compromise or you make that compromise after discussion. I mean, it's one thing whenever you, you have a, a discussion about something and two people have a, a, maybe even an argument, but that within that, some, comprom- some real compromise happens, some real change happens. But typically what really occurs is you find yourself getting irritated. Well, let me ask you this. I'm going to ask this again, or not again. I'm going to ask this in the comments. How many of you found yourself realize, looking back, realizing that something was wrong and then making the decision not to engage with it because you didn't want to deal with the, with the, the fallout, you were worried that maybe that discussion would lead to a blowout in the relationship and the relationship would fall apart. That was a big one for me. I don't know how many times that that's what I would do. I would get frustrated about something and I would get ready to where I wanted to ex- almost to explode. And I would say, no, I mean, I didn't feel, and I, this is the way I would rationalize it in my own, my own head. I would say, I didn't feel this way a couple of days ago. So this is, you know, the way I'm feeling right now isn't normal is what I would tell myself. So I'm like, you need to calm down, just take a chill pill. And my own head is what I'm, what I'm saying this in as. And then I would um, uh, just let it go. And then a few days later, things would be back to quote unquote normal. But the reality is, is it wasn't normal. It was that my blinders were back on. You know, it was almost like when I was having those epiphanies, I was seeing everything. I was seeing the reality of it, and I was ready for things to change. Okay, I'm seeing yes. Uh, I see Shane said me. Maria says me. Mr. Mann says stayed for the kids. Aaron says yes. Uh, Let's see, Julie said, uh, uh, my ex-narc always had it in for my partner, uh, has now convinced the children he was abusing them, just sick, I'm forever kicking myself for putting up with this crap. Yeah. I mean, that it's, it's Mr. Skull says yes. So the first part is we have to kind of, not kind of, we have to give ourselves a, a, a break or not. Okay. Yeah. We have to acknowledge our part into it, but you can't sit there and just completely beat yourself up. It's like, all right, I got it. I learned my lesson. I get it now. I'm going to be do things different going forward. Now that doesn't mean you're going to fight everything. And that doesn't mean, you know, you know, you got to be careful with, with your narcissistic ex, because if you sit there and you start throwing these major, major uh, boundaries or roadblocks or however you want to call it up there, you can rest assured that they are going to, you know, they will pull out the jackhammer and the high explosives to try to break through those. But the key is, is that whenever you start in engaging with other people, having new relationships, friendships, r- romantic relationships, just throw it out there. If you're early in this, take a, take a break and don't rush out into more relationships. You all need to take time to heal from this and to really get to a better spot. Rushing out and getting into another, another relationship typically can lead into more chaos. So you're much better off healing these wounds, getting to the point that you're good by yourself. So you're not afraid about being alone. And then ultimately, then whenever you start engaging or interacting with another person, if they do not hit your, your minimal, minimal level of humanness, you can say, no, I, this, you know, you could, at least you can have a conversation with and say, Hey, this is not appropriate for what's going on and something has to change. And if it doesn't change, we have a problem and to be okay with the consequence being maybe the relationship falls apart. All right. I'm trying to just scroll up on some of the comments cause I just saw some stuff popping in. I think, I think, 
Um, I got another caller, so let me get that set up. And uh, hello and welcome to the show. Hey, Dwayne. It's Tim here. How you going, mate? Hey, I'm doing good. How are you doing today? Oh, look, I'm not doing too bad. You, you, too you, bad yeah. You're actually sounding better today, it seems. Yeah, I um, look, I, I've taken some steps to um, improve my mental health in the last couple of days. So I'm, I'm feeling a lot better. Awesome. But, um, it actually got pretty bad for a little while, yeah. Um, I think I caught up this time last week and kind of remember what the issue was I spoke about, but um, it was just talking about relationships and um, how hard it is and um, I, uh, I had a girlfriend for about seven months, um, you know, after a couple of failed attempts since, um, since leaving my ex a few years ago. And, um, recently, recently I, I realized that I still had stuff that I had to deal with. You know, I was getting triggered by some of the things she was doing because of her own stuff that she was dealing with. And, oh, yeah. Um, ultimately, you know, it, it kind of felt good because I got to use some of the knowledge that I've learned from going through all of this to say, hey, actually, what's going on here is my boundaries are being compromised and I need to do something about it. Um, good for you, man. And, you I know, know that wasn't probably easy. I did. We had a chat. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done, actually. You know, to actually break something off that, you know, like it wasn't toxic. Like we were still amicable, we were still getting along. But it was clear that we just weren't meeting each other's needs. And, um, you know, we, we, we've had such a good time together and done a lot of things over the last six or seven months. Um, so yeah, it, it was quite sad, but um, you know, ironically, as I was having the conversation and pouring my heart out, there was a thing on my bedroom window, and um, and I I look out, there's a bunch of um, I don't know kids or teenagers. Oh my God, that was the same day. That 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 thing with your girlfriend and your yeah. son happened that same at the same time. Yeah. Oh dear God, you didn't tell me and that at the before. Same time, mate. Oh dear God! <laughs> At the same time, yep. So I and I ran up the street to see who it was, and it ended up being my son. And right. for those listening, this is my son who I go to DNA test. Turns out it's not my son, and my ex has completely cut me off from him. Right. Uh, it's just an absolute nightmare. And then it gets worse, mate. On Sunday, just gone. Um, I just handed the kids back over. Um, from having them for the first part of the school holidays. Right. And uh, she gave me a computer back that she was meant to as part of our mediation agreement. And uh, the computer was missing the hard drive and the RAM out of it. Um, I plugged it in, it didn't work, went to open it up. It, it had some random bolt through the case that her boyfriend put through it. So I had to break open the case to actually see what had happened. I just couldn't believe it. And she had, uh, my daughter had left a key card here. So I went over there with the key card and, um, and confronted her. I said, where are the hard drives out of the computer? Like, what, what's going on? And, um, straight away it just escalated and her boyfriend popped around the corner and, um, and he threatened to bash my head in. And then he got up all in my face. And sorry, this is a bit intense, guys. I um, probably should have mentioned trigger warning. Um, but yeah, it just got really, really full on. Did you guys actually get into a fight, or did you did you just leave? The oh, the police got involved. Uh, I I backed I backed away. Okay. Um, you know, it got really close. I've been I've been really really shaken up all week about it. But um, yeah, police. I got the police involved. I put the whole thing on recording. I've been recording everything with my um, with my Apple Watch. 
Oh, but, okay. um, the threat he made wasn't direct enough for them to do anything. So now I've got to, you know, apply it to the course directly and do right. this paperwork. Yeah. So, well, now that you've had a little bit of time, I, tell you what, it's just I mean, that's a nightmare, you know, but uh, yeah. my, my point being is that I can't have a relationship when all this stuff's going on. No, it's just not, it's just not going to happen. It, it's not, it's not, I mean, it's not healthy. It's, you know, I mean, and, and it adds, no. I mean, it's one thing if, if you're with somebody for a long time and they're kind of like, all right, I'm invested in it. So they're in it with you. I mean, okay, that's a different story, but, but it, it's, it's tough, you know, especially then you add the romantic side into it, then it just, it complicates it. I mean, you're better off. I mean, doing, doing this stuff alone is really tough, but you're almost better off if you have some non-romantic friendships that, you know, you can lean on. To where you don't have those extra dynamics in there. So now, when the last time I talked to you, you were getting ready to go on a, a little bit of a, a not a vacation, but but take a, a break. Were you, have you been able to do that? You were going to head up to the mountains or something. To did you get to do that, or are you still at home? Yeah, so that that's happening. That's happening um, in two days' time. I'm, I'm flying oh, okay. out of here and going on a bit of a break, just disconnecting. And yeah, I really, really need it. So. Um, I'm really lucky to have the opportunity to do it. No, that's great. Um, well, and like I said, you can, especially in Australia. Right. No, I mean, from the last time we spoke, I mean, from the last call, then I know we had a follow up call. Uh, you're sounding a lot better, man. Yeah, thanks, man. Um, yeah, like I said, I've, um, yeah, just, I don't know, just, just kind of switch things up a bit in my mind and change my mindset and, um, yeah, things should be working. Good. Well, I look forward to hearing from you whenever you get back. Thanks, mate. I will talk to you. All right. All right. Have a good rest, rest of your day. So, you know, I, I th this is actually, okay. So for people who, if, if you're new to the channel and you, you haven't heard his previous calls, I'm sure a lot of that's going to be confusing. And I think this is kind of a good example of what I was talking about earlier. So anyone who knows it, right, who knows the background of the story, and the, the story is, you know, bad, bad divorce, obviously, because that's why we're all here. He finds out his 15-year-old son isn't biologically his, so he's dealing with that. Also been diagnosed with a, a uh, chronic, not chronic, but a, a degenerative condition that is not going to affect his life in a positive way, dealing with a toxic narcissistic ex, dealing with parental alienation. You know, the son was already being, being turned against him. You know, now you add in the fact that it's not really his, that's being spun against him. I mean, so there's, there's all this, this stuff. And my point is, is that if you have the whole context or the whole story, then some of the little sound bites make sense because you have the context for it. But other people listening to it can look at it and be like, what in the world is going on here? This doesn't make sense. You know, what's happening? I think most people here have enough of an uh, experience with this where they can go like, oh, okay, I can see that. Like, you know, like for instance, on the computer part of it, that could have either been the ex or the boyfriend doing it, or it could have even been the son lashing out just because he's angry saying, okay, well, I'm going to take the memory and the hard drive out of this computer. You know, it's, it's, there's a bunch of different scenarios of how that could have played out so we are starting to run run up on uh the end of the show let me look through the comments because i don't want to miss anything let's see here um i'm like trying to see what some of the the comments on here were t solo says i compromised because my ex would make such a scene in front of the kids that it was so traumatic i would always just stand down yeah, and they're good at that. They're good at spinning things to where you just like, okay, you know, it's it's a classic double bind where it's like, how, what, what decision do you make? Every decision is bad. So you're trying to make the best of the bad situation. That's the thing that I think we all have to remember when we look at this and we, and we wonder how we got into this. We were making the best decision we could at the time with the information we had without the full picture and the context of, you know, the rest of the story. I mean, like today, I know, I mean, if I was to, to, right now, if I was to have one of those interactions or confrontations or however you want to call it with the ex, 
I would deal with it completely differently. I'm a different, let me back up. I'm a stronger person today than I was back then. I had so much fear based in my decision matrix that that's what would drive a lot of the, a lot of my issues is like, okay, well, like I already said, I mean, it's like, if I make this decision, is it going to, is she going to leave me? Am I going to lose everything? You know, am I going to be alone? Um, and it's, it's really weird how you can get caught up in that. Let me grab, whoops, moved right before I clicked it. Trisha says, my ex's trauma bonding was a masterclass in itself, uh, in our is self disgust. My recovery is a landmine of self disgust. My mind still tries to go back into my brain's trauma bond, dopamine tsunami. See, that's another thing is, is we do get kind of wrapped up in this to where we, we, we get that hit and it's like the chaos adds a spice into our life. I'm to the point now, I am so sick of chaos. I don't want chaos. I don't want to deal with it. I want peace. I do not want to, 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 <laughs> I don't want that crap in my life anymore. All right. Now we are, we are running out of time, which is good. I'm looking at this. Uh, oh, I like this. Trisha says, uh, respect your mind and your brain will follow. Cynthia says, wow, so sorry for the caller. Yeah, the, the caller's been through a lot. He's doing, he may, you guys may not have heard it. It may have still sounded like he was pretty down, but for everything he's going through, that was, that sounded like he was doing pretty good. Uh, let me see what else is going on. We're, uh, well, actually, I mean, we are basically out of time. So on that, thanks guys for hanging out on this Thursday. Uh, if you haven't done so, please uh, hit the like, the like button on the video if you think it deserved it. If not, hit the hit the other one. Uh, if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, ring the bell, all that kind of good stuff. Helps. It really does. It really does help. And uh, the other thing is, I just want to thank all the channel members. I'm going to go ahead and hit that. And this is the list, the latest list of all the channel members who have supported the show really appreciate all of that i will be back tomorrow be kind to yourself don't beat yourself up and we'll see you on tomorrow's show